All right, Squadron, in this video, I'm gonna, you're going to watch me fumble through how to set up SSR with uh, Vite, Ruby, and Inertia uh, in a Rails application so that we can render all the HTML first and then take the JavaScript and come in and take over. And if you don't have JavaScript enabled, the app still works. So let's have a look. All right, Squad. So today we're going to have a look at um, server-side rendering. We're going to try and work through the docs. We're going to see how easy it is to actually implement because I haven't done it yet. So it could be a disaster and not work. So we're going to work through the Inertia Rails docs here with the server-side rendering and as you can see this is now the inertia example here if we go view page source you can have a look here it's the standard javascript app right the client side rendered the body is just chilling here with absolutely nothing in it and that's not what we want with the server-side rendering we want to have the actual html rendered so that we can serve it up for the best seo really that's primarily the only reason I think we need really need to use SSR in most cases if you're building an app behind a login don't even worry about it to be honest not even important but the people have asked so let's jump in and see how we can do it okay so first step gonna jump into the docs read the docs good place to start or ask your LLM maybe that helps you I don't know but I'm gonna try the old school way so first things first we need to create a new f entry point so we know about entry points in here. So it's front end and then it's entry points. And then what we need to do is have an S. So it looks like a directory for some reason. So we're going to create a new directory, SSR, and then we're going to have SSR.js, I believe. Yes. Something to just call out as well. If you're using things like I get called out on this all the time by the code rabbit and stuff. It's like if we're using like location.path name and all those kind of things, that's probably going to break in SSR, right? So I usually don't care about it because I'm like, I don't care about SSR. But if you are, something to think about. All right, so this file is going to look very similar to inertia initialization file, except it's going to run in the browser. Sorry, not run in the browser, but rather in node. So here's an example. Okay, so let's just chuck that straight in. So what are we doing? We're creating an inertia app, creating a server, which is the React server and the DOM server. And then we're just rendering this. We're rendering the page. We're rendering to a string, right? So that's how we get our HTML. Uh, and then we're just doing a normal resolve, which is in the pages directory, which is great. And then we're just passing the props through from apps and prop. Quite straightforward there, looks like. Famous last words. When creating this file, be sure to add anything that's missing from your regular initialization file. Okay, so let's make sure we're doing that. Uh, I do have some stuff set up in Clipflow that is unique. So if you were doing this, you would need to do it. But then you can just look in here, right? Like what's what's different if you're doing anything special in here. So we use uh, Tansac Query. So that would be something you'd probably need to pull in here. All right, clustering. By default, the SSR server will run on a single thread. Clustering starts multiple node servers on the same port. Requests are then handled by each thread in a round robin way. You can enable clustering by passing a second argument to create server, which is this cluster true. We're not going to do that for sake of simplicity because I'm imagining it's going to add some complexity there. So just going to leave that out, but that is something to know. If you're running multiple node servers, you're probably going to have to have your server be able to handle that. So it's probably something that I don't know if we can define how that works or how many to start. And then set up VRuby next. Vite Ruby. Next, we need to update our Vite configuration to build our new SSR.js file. Uh, we can do this by building or adding SSR build enabled property to root Vite plugin configuration in the config Vite JSON. Right? Simple. So, what we're going to do here is inside of our code editor, we're going to look for that file. I'm just going to collapse all this. Vite, is it in here? And then it's inside of root Vite plugin. Yeah, so if we open up this, no, this is going to be fun. How do, where do we actually do this, guys? This would be really nice. We'll open up the root, the beat. So SSR is experimental. All right, beat review is SSR input, input, output. Let's have a look. SSR enabled. And that's the build enabled. All right, so let's see. How do we provide options to here? SSR, do we have to have production? No, it's not that. All right, here we go, first stumbling block. All right, so I'll just talk you through how I'm trying to figure this out. So if I go here, I, I command click on that, it opens up the types, then we're looking here, it's looking for a plugin option. If we look at the plugin options here, so what do we have? User config. And I'm just looking here for SSR. 
So server, no, build, preview, yeah, SSR. Right, so I think why? How do you define options in here? Someone help me. <laughs> right, so I thought you would do it in the plugins, but it looks like if we do SSR here and then we go um what's the next option? SSR build enabled. Let's see if that's SSR no. So SSR, yes. What's inside that? SSR options. Target, resolve, external. I wonder if we can just go SSR true. No. Looking inside of the initializers, we have the inertia rails initializer, and then we can see config SSR enabled is equal to v Ruby config SSR enabled. So there should, there's the v, there's another v rep JSON file. So I think, hopefully in here, I wonder if you can only do it in production, because that's what it said in there. And then it was, now I have to be careful that this actually does the right thing but if we want to look at the ssr like i feel like ssr enabled we could almost just turn v ruby config where is v ruby config if it will use the v there it's annoying because we have we have both All right so we've got the v json file here and i've just chucked in ssr build enabled and set it to true Let's uh, see if that works. I, I highly, highly doubt that. Um, so we'll have we'll have a look. Um, when running rake assets pre-compile will also run build simplifying the deployment setup. Now, let's see. So this is this is in this is asking for it in config slash v json right uh, property to the config, and that's just in production. But um, for now, I've just chucked in an all because we want to run it in dev, realistically. Um, so what we'll do that, see what happens, right? Uh, now what we need to do is go to Inertia Rails. And then in here, it's asking for the SSR enabled, but that's already there, right? That's already there. So that's all good. Uh, now you can build your server-side bundle. Okay. All right, so let's build it and see what happens. So we'll close Vite and we'll just run Vite build SSR. Building, oh, no SSR point found. That is a lie because we do have it. Front end, entry points, SSR, SSR. So it's saying no SSR entry point available. Please create one in SSR, SSR.js to do it build. So, Mm, that exists, guys. I wonder why that's not working now. Have fun. Yeah, mate. If you read the docs properly, at front end SSR. So that's in the wrong thing. It's not supposed to be an entry point. That's a bit confusing for me because I felt like it says we'll create a server entry point. So anyway, that's a gotcha there, guys. Make sure we put that in front end SSR. So let's go again. Beat build SSR. Building. Build failed. Why? Because something. Excellent. Error building, build failed. You gave us zero get roll up error, passing error. So it's like, okay, I know why. Because that's looking for, the, a, that's a JavaScript file, but it's it's actually producing JSX. So let's do JSX. I bet you that was said that as well, and I just didn't do it. And that says JS. That could just be an issue with how we've got it set up. There we go. Wonderful. All right, so we've got public vit ssr ssr.js, so it's set that up for us. So now, if we have a look, close all this, and then we go to public vit ssr ssr.js, that's all set up, ready to go. All right, good. All right, so we've done that, we ran, okay, so now what we want to do, we built that, now we can run ssr. All right, let's see what happens. So we're going to run Vite SSR. All right, Inertia SSR server started. Here we go. Rails is running. Let's see what happens. Did that just load? That's interesting. No, it's still running JS though. 
wonder if it can't do it in dev mode. That's interesting. So SSR server started. Okay, let's try this. We're going to disable JavaScript. No, nah, it's broken. So that's not, not actually loading. It's not loading our, our thing there. It's listening for it. I wonder how you actually start that. Let me restart Rails. Did we make changes config? It depends. It's still not working. We are getting an error here. Can I read properties of undefined reading default in node modules react dist index? So that, that's interesting. I wonder if that's like an actual bug here. Let me just check that we got on the latest versions. There's a few outdated versions here. So I'm just going to bump inertia. I'm just, double, I'm just debugging now. We're just going down the debug journey. It's never as easy as just following the docs, is it? So here we've got the Vite.js, Vite, what do we have? 635, should we just YOLO it, guys? Uh, and the Vite plugin is 511. All right, let's close this and go yarn. Send it there. It's there while that's doing its thing. We're also going to just jump into the gem file. What's Inertia Rails sitting on these days? Inertia Rails, let's have a look. What are you on? 380, we're on 380. Boss. Okay, so that should be all right. All right, let's run this server again. Started. Cannot read properties of undefined reading default in shared inertia, node modules inertia JS React dist. Good times. How fun is this? So having a look here, it, this is the line that's crashing. So it's we're passing this. So we're passing a or we're doing a promise here resolving. Then we're get, trying to find h dot default. So this is obviously the import of the file. Now. It could be related to here, but we are exporting the default here. So there could be a problem here. I think I found it. Okay, so good times, great classic hits. You can see here, this is JSX, right? So our pages are in TSX. So that's gonna be an issue, isn't it? So that's obviously, I think that's gonna be the problem. I won't talk too soon. Let's just see. Yeah, so we've changed this to TSX. So this is why it's important to make the changes. So if I just change that to TSX, oh, it's taking a bit longer. Still didn't work. Let's see. Still can't do it. Maybe let's just do a reboot. Oh, maybe we, we have to do that recompile again because I'm just hoping. I'm hoping. Like it feels right. But if we go to public, see it's looking for JSX there. Okay. So we need to run that again. Realistically, I almost want to change this to TSX as well, just to keep it all the same. Uh, and then what was the command, guys? It was Vite. Build SSR. Okay, we built the chunk there. There we go. That's looking, there we go. That's it. That's it. All right. Please work. Now we go Vite SSR. Man, if everyone's watching still, good on you. Really good on you. Oh. We did it. Did it. So that's JS disabled. That's, I mean, I, I hope so. Here we go. So. We are running disabled JavaScript. If we look at the page source, what do we got? We've got a full app rendered here in the body. Boom. Server rendered. Like, yeah, good stuff. All right, squad. So what, what do we have to do? Uh, when we set up our SSR, apart, don't read the docs. <laughs> read the docs. Make, make a TSX. If you're using TSX here, make sure these file extensions line up. Very important, okay? So we got that. That matches up. It's all because debugging here and I'm just like h dot default because this this message is nonsense. Like what does that even mean? But you can what the giveaways here is if we go to this file line one character fifteen hundred and sixty five because all compressed, you can see it's this default. And I was like, okay, well, that's the default export. And that led me down the road to try and find. So we're getting the right pages. We're finding the thing. We're looking for the wrong extension. We're looking for JSX not finding TSX and everything's getting sad and crying a river. All right, so we're actually up and running. So that's really exciting. Um, there's nothing better than debugging a problem and actually fixing it. So let's turn back on JS, right? So let's have a look now what's going on. So we've turned it back on. Uh, we're viewing the page source. So the first page down is there, that's great. So now if we go into our inertia example, hopefully that, that runs as well. Wonderful. Um, where did we use some data? I'm just trying to think where we actually used something. I think it might have been in project. So I'll go back to that. Um, and this is all server rendered. If we hit this, edit this, right? So what you just saw there. So if we view this page source, 
and refresh. Um, that looks like it's still not, nah, it's putting it all in there. So we got the string. So that's, it's actually server rendering, which is really cool. But what you can see here is when this is server rendered, it's flashing this. It's actually going to fetch the prop still. So we're server rendering the first page. So if I just refresh that, I'll clear this log. We can see we're getting a get request here. And what are we doing? We're fetching the statuses after. So this is, people ask me about this, like how do you server render and then fetch, you know, props on the fly or fetch some data later, which we can. So we've got a deferred prop which is the statuses, and that's being loaded. So we're server-side rendering. So if, so I guess the way we could test this is if we disabled JavaScript now and then reloaded this, everything works hunky-dory except old mate because we've disabled JS. So that's how the server-side is rendering. So server-side is dumping the first page for us. But now like in production for me, I would probably still not run this because I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, if the only place I ever want to use server-side rendering realistically is for like um, marketing pages, right? So like things that have happened prior to logging in because we build SaaS apps, right? If you're building some sort of directory that needs to be shown to everyone, then sure, use SSR, have a great day. If you want to use React components, all good. But for me, I'm like, if I'm going to use server-side rendering, I'm probably just going to use ERB or view component from Rails just to keep things simpler. Um, but like if this adds a little bit of complexity, right? So what you need to be doing, you can see we're running a server. Now I imagine to run this in production, like it's prob it probably talks about it. Um, deployment, you'll need to build both the client side and server side bundles and then run the SSR server as a background process. So that means you actually have to, in your Docker image or something, when we just do a Rails S, we now have to also remember to run a V SSR so that we can serve that. I just feel like it's adding too much complexity. Like what is the gain for you? Like you might have a very good um, use case. And I have asked a few people who have commented on the videos, like what, what's a use case I'd like to know? Just purely out of interest, like because I haven't really hit it. Um, but there you go. So it's like that. It's like, it is actually quite simple if everything lines up. So there's a few little gotchas. This is the key one here. Right, don't try, make sure this is lined up. Um, and then your config lives inside. I'm just building SSR for everything in here, which is the Vite JSON directory. But realistically, you probably just put that in production. Probably not. Or again, if you want to test everything works in dev, probably not a bad idea to have it here. Uh, so commands, you can follow this thing, but it's like build the SSR and run the SSR. And then we can add client hydration. So we can do instead of create root, we can do hydrate root. So we can do that. We can just go into here, uh, create root. We're gonna change that to hydrate root from the same package, right? Because we've got SSR now. We should be able to. I probably need to restart the server, let's be honest. Right, now we can do that. We also need to make sure we turn JavaScript back on. There we go. Boom. The boys are on. So that's it. So now we're running hydrate instead of create so that it can do the hydration step. So it gets all the server stuff, then React takes over. Boom. And away you go. And you've got server-side rendering with inertia in Rails. All right. Until next time, guys. Catch you later.